Mr. Eichler's birthday with the package from China. So let's go. Hey hey, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. So in today's video, we're going to take a close look at the Game Stick GD20, also a 4K Game Stick. Yeah, this is just a thing they're going to keep doing. So what we're going to get is, of course, yeah yeah, professional game chip. But later on, we're going to do a teardown, checking out what we're actually going to get inside of the chipset. Nevertheless, we're going to get the same configuration, only this thing does come with two USB connections. That is something that is not common. But also what is interesting, that we do have MU-ELEC 4x3. And that is kind of interesting because it's the same configuration like the Super Console X stick. <laughs> but I do wonder what kind of power are we going to have with this particular product. So we have reviewed all kinds of different devices and also the configuration is slightly different. I mean particularly when looking into the box itself, the controller, everything. So the compact cube design, the box is the same like all the other ones. So the game stick, I can tell you, man, this thing is huge. This is one of the biggest stick. It's also from the brand M Pound. I find it sound very difficult to pronounce. Nevertheless, and then we're going to get the plug and play situation. Again, just stick it into your USB port. Over here, we're going to get now a type C connection. So that is new, normally always having the micro USB, micro USB to USB port at the back. But when it comes to this game stick, the unfortunate thing is that they switched from SanDisk and other brands to these cheap non-generic brands. 256 gigabytes, so I think it's the biggest configuration that you can have when it comes to ordering these devices. But unfortunate, yeah, the question remains, how long will this SD card work? And I recommend making a backup on your PC. The brand itself is also known as Mpound. So inside we're going to get two controllers and one USB dongle. How does it actually work? It's very simple. They configured this this way. I have seen it many times before, but what is convenient with this particular like stick? So we have two USB ports. So if you're going to get another set, you can plug in an extra set and you have a four play configuration and it will be cool with games like N64. But the overall quality controller, it's the same shenanigans, but not the worst one out there. The controller quality, I must say that it's the same that I've seen many times before. So one of the tests I love to do is checking out the joysticks, how is the overall like resistance of the joystick and they have rubberized joysticks. So that is an okay quality. The cheap ones or the cheap to the cheap cheap ones have just plastic. Overall when you're pressing the ABXY button they feel quite nice and the same goes for the D-pad. A little bit loose by the overall quality, I must say that I'm surprised. The configuration, like the previous like controllers, on-off switch with a compartment of two AAA batteries. They nowadays implement an extra cable or an extension cable, so it just has no way of plugging it in. I think they figured out that they have there are no, almost no television where you can plug in this freaking dongle. So an overall configuration, how everything works. And let's see if two, yeah, we do have two different languages. But when you're looking at the manual, they explain an overall okay situation. There's so far I can see no configuration about the specs of the dongle. It shows you what kind of stuff you can actually play. And with the newer ME -like, we also have support for the Saturn. And I think that's pretty damn awesome. But let's plug it in and let's see how the manual looks, works and all the other craziness. Oh, don't you love reflections of your television? <laughs> you can see all the junk laying around. But okay, so basically there are two ways you connect it. So this is one of the ways yet basically gets... I love the idea that you can plug something in your television, but it just destroys the idea by this extension cord. Now it's just dangling behind your television. But it is way easier if you have your television mounted to your, let's say, wall. Another thing you can do if you have just a monitor with some space behind it, you can just plug it in like this. But yeah, let's be honest. Come on, look like how far this thing sticks out. And then, of course, we're also going to get this cable. And this cable we're going to plug into the power over here. Take note, like what is a little bit of a problem sometimes if you have a USB port, for example, over here, I have one at the bottom part. It is possible to use this for powering on the stick itself. But if you have issues, yeah, I would recommend getting yourself a five volt adapter, just a normal adapter for giving this thing some use. But that's of course, depending on what kind of television or monitor you're using. Personally, I think the game stick is absolutely a very cool idea. You don't have all the craziness of a game system beneath your monitor. And this is just a very cool plug and play solution. But when it comes to a form factor like this, we also do have some minor setbacks, mostly when it comes to the overall performance. So the menu, I don't know what kind of style of menu this actually is, but it looks pretty damn good. So when you're choosing a different kind of platform, 
Oh boy, this is looking very nice. Unfortunate when pressing start, there we have limitations. Previous game sticks with ME Alec had the same issue. Unlock the UI mode. And from this point on, there is nothing I can do. So let me know in the comments if you have a solution for this. I checked the manual, there is nothing there explaining how you need to unlock it. Well, why do you need to unlock it? Very simple. So when you're going to do this, you have so much more, let's say, adjustment room. And you can tweak it if you have any problems. And now we're quite limited. So we do have the ME Alec settings menu where we have a couple of settings that we can turn on and off, but it's quite let's say basic information here we can find the user disk usage here we can find the temperature this thing is just running on 44 celsius just idle and later on we'll also maybe check out what it is when we're going to play some games but looking into the chipset cpu model the s905m revision c comes with a quad core and an aram mali 450 mp yeah it's a little bit of a bummer in my opinion because the specs is not going to be any interesting or anything new at least the overall menu also when you're playing or searching for a game looks kind of cool here we're going to get ourselves the impound the special menu and the overall layout is clean it's simple and yep it looks absolutely amazing only there is a little bit of a text missing but it will automatically scroll to the left so this looks really nice pressing select and start will bring you back to the menu and it will also give you the last list that you've visited but your fortunate thing is is that and there's something i really don't find in i don't like it at all is that we don't have a quick load quick save when it comes to let's say a menu menu between it that's one of the things i find very convenient but some of the cheaper game sticks all right so what you also can do with this particular software pressing x it will guarantee you the option to search through the system itself and that is quite convenient so let's take a close look at psych let's see what happens oh okay to see and let's press enter it freezes for a couple of seconds but that option seems to be working just fine and from this point we can actually just boot up a game so that is very convenient, but there was no picture whatsoever. So that is a little bit of a bummer again. But the old school stuff runs just fine. And thinking game stick like this is a lot of fun. But there was some glitching going left and right. Not a big of a deal in my opinion. Pressing both joysticks will grant us the option to get into RetroArch to configure inputs and all kinds of stuff. I think it's pretty cool. So if you just want to mess around with the scaling, getting those filters out, you can always do it over here. Nevertheless, that is very cool and I think it's a very nice thing. Also, we can make quick loads, quick saves if you want to. Where I always complain a lot on these, this game stick that we have a lot of problems. Of course, when reviewing these things and just talk about the basic stuff. Yep, that runs most of the time just fine without any problems. But with the 60x9, there was one particular thing I really hate. And that's how we're going to have old school games like a Neo Geo Pocket. Absolutely fun, but this needs to have bezels. Because, come on, let's be honest, this is unfreaking playable. I don't want to see this widescreen shenanigans. So what we need to do, pressing both of the joystick at the same time. Here we're going to get ourselves the quick menu most of the time. If you're going to be in this particular menu, pressing B will bring you back over here. So going to the settings, going to video, here we have all of the things that we can change out. So first of all, if you don't want the 60 by 9, we can just go into the scaling and mess around with all kinds of things. For example, here we're having all kinds of scaling. So let's say we're going to put it by 4 by 3. It's going to be slightly better. We don't have the widescreen shenanigans, but we can just upscale, check the filters and go crazy with it. And make this thing look way better than it was done from the manufacturer. It's still not perfect, but it's way better than this weird looking 60 by 9. And take consideration if you're going to actually play this on a 55 inch television. Oh boy. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Turtles in Time. This is absolutely one of my favorite games to play on my Super NES. Back in the day, I was just always like a Sega fan. I'm just going to be honest. Hyperstone, I basically played it later on on some emulator devices. And then I needed to have it, of course. Because also the Mega Drive has especially some great touch to it. But when it comes to these older 16-bit games, you can just play them without any problem. But of course, there is so much more we can play with this particular device. And it runs just fine when it comes to MAME games. Of course, Killer Instinct, Tekken MAME, that will not run on this. We need a mini PC for that. 
but just the basic games, like in 64 speed, a lot of fun. I can tell you, the first time I ever played it was on my App Games Ultimate Legend Machine. It's such a basic game, but it's so much fun. But if you're absolutely a fan of Sega, like me, I must say that these games will run also fine. There are like stretch out 16 by 9 audio, no weird stuff going on. Next step, I just want to try out the 3D world. This is absolutely one of those games I also wanted to play because back in the day with the cheaper handhelds and emulation device, they also had issues with Sonic 3, but also when it comes to the overall controls. This is a game you don't need to have any input lag or problems with the D-pad, and it works like a charm. Alright, so let's get into the PlayStation Portable, one of my favorite games, Tekken 6. Let's get into the emulator pressing both joysticks. Here we can go into the game settings and mess around with it to a certain point. Frame skip already set to 1 and that's what we're going to need. The weird thing is like they put the 2 times resolution PlayStation Portable on. That is kind of strange because normally we don't have this set to that, only to 1 times at least. Show the FPS counter so we can check out what kind of performance we're getting. So let's get into it. The unfortunate thing is with a specification list, we like this older devices that we have seen many times before now. The overall performance is going to be pretty damn bad and even setting all the way up my opinion to two times resolution is not a good idea. This runs really bad. If they're going to be adding PlayStation Portable or you're going to be adding PlayStation Portable, doesn't matter who edits, edits it. <sighs> Alright, I wanted to say stuff like this actually runs pretty decent, but we have a lot of glitching going on. And oh boy. Yep. Jeez, man, it runs pretty damn bad. Frame skipping set to 2. Okay. So we just shut it off to begin with. Oh man, okay, one time places you, that's kind of weird that it's, we can adjust it over here. Okay, so let's see what happens if we're going to be, ah, that's much better. So they completely messed up the settings, that is one thing to be sure. So you need to have a little bit of knowledge to tweak these things, but we can play two dimensional games like Jetpack Joyride. Oh boy, I've played this game on so many devices, but PlayStation Vita was, my Android tablets, Everything, like this game, is completely awesome, man. Collecting new coins, getting new stuff, oh yeah. Mm -mm -mm. Power up, oh, Mr. Cuddles. So let's start off with some Sega Dreamcast and Sonic Adventure 2. I must say that this is one of those games that I've played so much on my Sega Dreamcast and brings back a lot of memories. But what you need to take consideration that these games can play quite nicely. And they're running on native resolution, that is one thing to take consideration. And why do I say native resolution? If you're going to have a mini PC or a more powerful stick, sometimes we can scale it a little bit so it looks better. When you're listening to the Sega Dreamcast part, there are a lot of the more demanding games, but the overall performance when it comes to the auto is not bad itself. N64 is absolutely one of those systems that you hate or love and I grew up with them, I have so many fond memories and maybe that's the problem with me. But let's get into some Blast Corps and let's do a couple of games just to see how actually great it is because when it comes to emulation with these super game sticks, oh boy, it's absolutely a nightmare. So the first thing I already noticed that I did see a lot of glitching here and there and that's one of the problems I've noticed. But I am surprised how actually good it runs on this freaking cheap game stick. So 
So the overall configuration is not bad at all. But the tiny character in the left corner is completely glitched out. But also you can see on the road we have a lot of glitches going on. But if you watch a lot of my videos, you know one of my tests I love to do is cruising the USA. Because this game runs absolutely garbage most of the time. And of course I don't expect a way better performance with this device. But still, we just gave it a try. Mm -hmm, Alright. Yeah, there we go. Okay, I must say in overall performance, I'm quite surprised. With the minor starters here and there, it's not that bad. I have seen a lot of really bad emulation with this particular game. But if you want to play some N64, we need to have a mini PC. Those things have way more power and they can run N64 and native resolution way better. Oh, there we go. It freezes. Can I reset the system? Oh boy. Yeah, this also happens a lot. So let's reset this thing by turning my television off and on. Oh yeah. So in most videos I like to implement a teardown just to see how does this thing look in the inside and how the engineering has been done and the cooling of course. So first of all it's a big stick, that's one thing to be sure. So what I understand of this is the antenna that they implemented with a tiny, tiny cable and in here we're having, having the weight of it and this makes sense, this makes absolutely sense now. This has a very nice weight, but they implemented a piece of metal with a thermal pad. So that is positive, because you don't see this every single time. So the chipset is indeed correct. The S905 MB model quad-core AM Logic comes with a 450 Mali in GPU. Nothing very fancy, not a lot of RAM. It's a very basic old stick. Slept, or a new chip slept on a new PCB. Quite a bummer in my opinion. The improvement of the cooling because this thing does get really hot. The G20 is an overall quite a disappointment. Wet Emmy Alec had so much potential, they completely dropped the ball in many different ways. When it comes to, let's say, not configured correctly games, but also when it comes to overall, let's say, performance issues, this thing is just an old game stick in a new design. Let me know what in the comments what you think of this. Here's some positive and negative parts about this thing. I hope this video gives you a clear idea of what you're going to get with a device like this. And it will be great to see you in the next video. Mm.